Hello and welcome everyone to this series I am creating on Visual Studio Code. Now this will be a series, so there'll be several videos, but this will be the first in the series and this is an introduction to who, what, when, where, and why. Why are you using Visual Studio Code? And you need to answer that question because I am a .NET programmer. I use the regular Visual Studio IDE 90% of the time. And in my profession, I have seen Visual Studio Code grow and grow and I see more and more people using it. Some people in my profession use only Visual Studio Code. It just depends on what's best for you. The regular Visual Studio comes jam-packed with all kinds of project types, and it's it's got the .NET framework. It's bigger. It's what's called heavier, meaning it's just it's got more to install. There's more to it, which is why I use it. Once it's installed, it does a lot. But we're talking about Visual Studio Code here and why we're going to use it, and you need to be able to answer that question. And in this intro, I hope you can do that. So let's get into Visual Studio Code. And here I am on the download page. And what you see is you can download Windows, which is the world I live in. I use Linux for fun and I do projects in Linux. You know, I've got a Raspberry Pi and all, but for my daily day-to-day -day professional use, we use Windows. Linux, you can download, and then of course Mac. And that's kind of the precursor to what we're gonna talk about, the power of Visual Studio Code, is you can use Linux, Mac, and Windows, where before Visual Studio, big, heavy, only Windows. So Visual Studio Code was developed by Windows, but they made it for the first time, you know, and not in their reputation, but they made it as open source. So that makes it highly customizable and a lot more secure because people can look at the code and make sure nothing nefarious is going on. Now, what is Visual Studio Code? It is, first of all, it was developed in Electron JS, which is a way to develop applications that are cross-platform. That's how they did it, and that's how come we are able to use it in both Linux and and Mac and Windows. So that's kind of cool. If you use Linux, it will look exactly the same and work the same as it does in Windows, or it should. Okay, so what is Visual Studio Code? It's really, it's really a, a, a great lightweight, and what that means is it's not it doesn't take it's not a big download. It's not it doesn't require a huge framework like Visual Studio. You install it, and you can get up and running. And it has what are known as uh, add-ons or extended extendability. So you can add on tons and tons of extendables and, and make it very customizable. And that's kind of the power. It's cross-platform and it's extensible. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. So when we talk about using Visual Studio Code, and I'll just talk about my experience, whenever I want to do something that is not dot net based like I want to run a quick little Python program or a script or something I will fire up Visual Studio Code it runs it pops up really fast and you can debug Python for example and do some Python programs little simple scripts and things that you want to get done very good for that you don't need visual regular Visual Studio Visual Studio Code like I said it's it's a cross language so let's talk about the actual features of that right now and you'll see how this is why it's special. It's because it can do all the languages pretty much. Let's take a look. So if we look here, we see it can do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, JSON, XML, YAML, Python, Ruby, Node, C Sharp, all the same languages, Angular, React. So you see it's actually much bigger in a way. It, it goes way beyond regular Visual Studio in a, in a sense that if you wanted to do an Angular project, and I've seen this in, on the job, all of it, Angular and Node, all of it is done in Visual Studio Code. They don't even use Visual Studio. It depends on who and where you are. You can do, if I'm gonna do an ASP.NET app, I'm gonna use regular Visual Studio uh, because of the, the way it works and the way everything, the way all the add-ins and the new get packages and all of that that comes with Visual Studio. But if I'm doing an Angular app, it's not really geared for .NET, is it? So all the package handling and all that stuff would be better suited, suited for Visual Studio Code. So there's time and a place for both. And these are the kind of things, the decisions you're gonna have to make. If it's a pure .NET app or something like that, or if you're doing a Python script, you're gonna make decisions whether or not to use this. And Visual Studio Code, as you will see, is very power powerful. In addition to that, um, the debugging tools and the stepping, it, it does true debugging. It's kind of like a text editor. Think of Visual Studio Code as a really nice text editor, but with powerful 
ways of debugging and project management type tools. And let's take a look at that right now. So this is the interface for Visual Studio Code. And yeah, it looks a little strange at first. If you've never seen this before, we are doing an intro, so I'm gonna assume you've never seen anything like this. It gets better, I'll put it that way. You start to get used to these, these colors and these themes and where things are. And these buttons over here are pretty much, and we'll go into those more in, in detail in the next and following videos. We're gonna cover a lot of Visual Studio Code, but this is just the intro. You can, over here is your file explorer and these are your files. And of course they've got, you could change the colors. You can change everything about this, but we'll do all that in later videos. Uh, right here is, a, this is an app that I installed called Docker. We won't talk about that right now, but here's the debugger. And under here, I have a sample Python app. And that's what's so cool is you can just run Python right here very quickly. And you can't do that in vis regular Visual Studio, but you can do it here. So I have an app that I downloaded, well, it's actually code, that does uh, Pig Latin translation. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So up here, it takes an input. I don't even know what this code does, really. I just grabbed it, put it in here, and tested it, and it just kind of works, just to show you guys. So let's, I put, and here's what we are talking about, breakpoints and debugging. So you click over here, and this is the power of debugging when you have a program and you're a programmer you're going to be doing a lot of this type of debugging where you run it and you step through it and you can look inside of these variables and let's run this right now now notice i'm in the debugger right here just so you know are where you can install your extensions extendable so i install i happen to have python docker code runner and you come up here and you type in whatever c sharp Right, and if you, and I already have C sharp and it says I need to reload here, but this is how it can handle different languages. So if you need, say you want Python and you're not ready, you know, once you install this, you won't have any of these in here. You can install them at will and, and you can remove them at will. But it's telling me, I haven't done this in a while, so this needs to be reloaded for some reason. Anyway, we can debug Python and let's do a reload right now. Let's see what happens. So probably it was an update is what happened. And so if we go here and here, here are my installed, here's my Python. It looks like it's up to date now. Okay, so we're in the extensions right here and here's our extensions, but here's our debugger. And like I said, you'll get used to this. You'll jump back and forth between your files, your file explorer, and here's a folder. You'll just, you can just do a file, open folder, pick your folder. I happen to be in Pi right here. And then these files show up. And that's a really nice way to keep your projects very simple. They're just files in a folder. And then down here, we're in debug mode, and I'm gonna close this, and let's run this, and it's gonna ask you, and there's ways to set this up so you don't have to do it, but I'm, I have a, a Python file now, it needs to know, because if this was Node or something else, it would need to know that it was Node, but this is Python, and so we're gonna run it. And down here, in the console, it's saying, let's put a sentence in here. Let's learn VS code. And it's going to translate that. It's going to do all this stuff up here and translate it to Pig Latin. Okay, so notice it stopped on that breakpoint, and I'm going to hit, you can continue or step over, and step in, step over. Step over means don't go into a function. Step into means do go into a function, and then they've got reset, restart, and stop. So let's, we could just hit stop, but, and down here, it's going to go through here, and you can hover with your mouse over the variables and it'll give you the value that's in them. Isn't that cool? That is very important as programmers to be able to see what's, when you're doing math and logic and you're doing lots of files or something, you're gonna need to know what's in here, what's in words. And this looks like it is a, they took the words that I typed and they split them into four, into an array of four items, code, VS, learn, LUTs. And they're going through these and one at a time, and this word is LUTs. It's gonna go through these one at a time. Let's just go ahead and run this to the very end, and notice it jumps to the next four. It's in a for loop, it's gonna go for each time in the words, and then we've got four words, so it's gonna keep going. I think we have four words. All right, now we've down, come down here, it's about to print at the bottom what our translation is, and there it is. So there's our translation, let's learn VS, VS code, Etzle, Ernle, Vise, Odeke. 
And I'm going to give a little speech about why we program right now. So in my job right now, we are getting, we have to go out and get data, shipping data. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of records. So for each item that is shipped, we go and get all the different checkpoints that that item went through. So when you think about when you order something, every time it stops somewhere, when it gets scanned, it stops in this city and this city, and then it's out for delivery, and then it comes to your house. Well, we grab all that data. And the only way to do that would be in a program because to going out there manually and doing that, grabbing one at a time, you couldn't do it. There's literally hundreds of thousands of records. So if you write a program that can do this for you, it will go and get that data, it will bring it down, and it will put it in a database where you can use it. So if someone brings up an order and they say, where's my package? We know exactly where it is at that point in time. That's the power of programming. And that's what they're going to pay you for if you're professional. Is being able to automate these very, very huge amounts of data so you can go in and pick little, little bits of it out. And that's kind of an example of why we, we become programmers. So I want, please uh, like and subscribe, hit the alert button, and we're going to be doing a series of be at least eight of these videos as we go through here and we do different things. We, we're not going to do a lot of programming, but we're going to do a lot of explaining what are all these things. And if you just watch this video, you won't even need to take a class. You'll know more than your professor. Thank you. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and we'll see you in the next video coming soon.